I'm going to read an excerpt from chapter four. Uh, again, the chapter called Medicine, and specifically from a section called Considering the Risks of Reductionism as We Choose What to Put in Our Bodies. Uh, Long-time loyal listeners will remember that in our very first live stream on March something, 2020, um, we said that we had just that month submitted the first draft of, of this book. And this book being A Hunter-Gatherer's Guide to the 21st Century. This book being A Hunter-Gatherer's Guide to the 21st Century, a book that we've been talking about writing for over a decade. And it's, it's, it's written now, and it'll be out in September of this year. Um, and... Uh, the first draft uh, has changed. The, the final draft has changed a lot from the first draft, but very little in this chapter has. Uh, and so, um, th- you know, this was written before COVID, largely. There's there's one section not in what I'm going to read, um, which we actually did go back in and and just add a paragraph um, because we were doing all the revisions during COVID. But um, recognize that we wrote this based on our lifetime of thinking evolutionarily, not within the context of a pandemic with this with this novel virus or these novel vaccines. So considering the risks of reductionism as we choose what to put in our bodies. Is vanillin, is vanillin the same as vanilla? Is THC identical to marijuana? No. In both cases, a single molecule, active and important in the human experience of the larger thing, vanilla or pot, is not representative of the whole. In the case of vanillin, the effect appears to have culinary ramifications only. Foods flavored with vanillin do not have the full richness of vanilla. In the case of THC, which has long been understood to be the main psychoactive constituent of cannabis, breeding only for that molecule made plants that would certainly get you high, but they had insufficient antipsychotic tempering effects from CBD, another active molecule in pot. Oops. And as of this writing, there is a new marijuana molecule getting traction in both the scientific literature and the pot breeding community, CBG. It is being purported to have benefits even greater than those of CBD. Maybe. But it is the human discovery of that molecule that has elevated it to the status of being studied. It was there all along, but now we've imbued it with mystical qualities. Our discovery of it changes nothing about what it does. We often mistake an effect, for instance of an action, a treatment, or a molecule, for our understanding of the effect. What a thing does and what we think or know that it does are not the same thing. A combination of hubris and technical capacity has humans recreating this error over and over again. <clears throat> from Florida drinking water to shelf-stable foods with unintended consequences, from the myriad issues with sun exposure to whether GMOs are safe, we are constantly seduced by reductionist thinking, led astray by the fantasy of simplicity where the truth is complex. Reductionism, particularly with respect to our bodies and minds, is harming us. Sometimes it is even killing us. Early in the 20th century, fluoride was discovered to be correlated with fewer cavities. So fluoride was put into many municipal water supplies to decrease tooth decay. The fluoride in drinking water is a byproduct of industrial processes, though, not a molecular form that appears in nature or has ever been part of our diet. That's one point against it. Furthermore, we find neurotoxicity in children who are exposed to fluoridated drinking water, a correlation between hypothyroidism and fluoridated water, and in salmon, a loss of the ability to navigate back to their home stream after swimming in fluoridated water. Is fluoride a magic bullet for reducing cavities with no cost to other aspects of health? Seems not. More to the point, the quest for magic bullets for simple answers that are universally applicable to all humans in all conditions is misguided. If it were that easy, selection would almost certainly have found a way. Think you found a solution that is too good to be true? Look hard for the hidden costs. Remember Chesterton's fence. And I'm going to skip over our discussion of uh, the shelf stability of processed foods and the discussion of vitamin D just so that we have a slightly shorter excerpt here and move into um, and also about sunscreen and move here. Given this track record of reductionist science and health advice, should we trust that GMOs are safe just because those who would profit from their acceptance either intellectually or financially tell us they are? We suggest not. Are some GMOs safe? Almost certainly. Are all GMOs safe? Almost certainly not. How will we know which are which, and can we rely on those who have created them to be vigilant on our behalf? Until we know the answer to those last questions, the precautionary principle suggests steering clear. Finally, it is worth noting that some of the major successes of Western medicine, surgery, antibiotics, and vaccines are firmly rooted rooted in a reductionist tradition and have saved millions of lives. The problem we are highlighting is the over-application of a reductionist approach. The germ theory of disease, in its simplest formulation, the recognition that pathogens cause much disease, led to the discovery and formulation of antibiotics, a huge health boon for humanity. Then we overgeneralized and imagined that all microbes are bad for us. 
We are now coming to realize that our microbiome has evolved with us and is necessary for a healthy gastrointestinal tract. Antibiotics are one of relatively few powerhouse tools of Western medicine, but as they have been overprescribed, we have seen an attendant rise in people becoming sick, often chronically so. Just as people are falling ill from lacking healthy microbiomes due to overprescription of antibiotics, so too are our livestock. Furthermore, there are unintended side effects of many antibiotics that will be shocking to most people. My personal experience with the unintended consequences of antibiotics was a ruptured Achilles tendon. It's now understood that tendon and ligament injury is one side effect of Cipro and all of the antibiotics in that class, the fluoroquinolones, which, um, which I took in quantity in the 1990s to ward off GI bugs while conducting research in the tropics. From fluoridated drinking water to antifungals and shelf-stable food, from sunscreen to the overuse of antibiotics, over and over we make the same kinds of mistakes. Combine reductionism with a tendency to overgeneralize in a hypernovel world where quick but expensive and potentially dangerous fixes are common, and we've explained some of the major errors of modern health and medicine. This is exactly what we're wrestling with here. It's not going to be simple. And if someone is telling you, I've got the simple magic bullet and it's going to allow you to get back to your life and you're going to go out and be able to have cocktails with your friends without worrying ever again about COVID, they probably are trying to sell you something that isn't exactly like what is in the package that they've got for you. Yeah, um, there are two things going on. One is the tendency to um, overgeneralize from reductionism, and the other has to do with perverse incentives. And they're both captured there. I mean, I remember the world that you and I grew up in was a world that did regard microbes as hostile, yeah. even though microbes lice all everywhere well that's Not, exactly. I, mean, I don't think either actually in either of our homes but in in many many homes lysol was probably probably in my my natal home i, I at least can tell you what it smells like so <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, I can too. um so it was there but yes the sense that what one was trying to do was to drive microbes to zero is a preposterous it's impossible it would be deadly um and the point is it uh misses the basic point which is that the occasional microbe is uh dangerous mm -hmm. and most microbes are harmless and some microbes are essential and you know welcome to complex systems yeah 